Utah, Colorado, uh, Wyoming, part of New Mexico. And uh, again, illustrates just what the landscape really is all about. There isn't much water, you've got to find it and impound it to use it. Let's, let's talk about California. In California, the, um, there's two basic water supply sources, the surface water and the groundwater. A little bit more comes from the surface water sources, meaning reservoirs, and four major projects in California, appropriated rivers. One called the State Water Project, the Central Valley Project, the LA Aqueduct, which some of you may be familiar with, and the Colorado River. But everyone talks about those, but those only make up maybe 20% um, of the entire water supply of California, those four big projects. A huge amount is, is groundwater, but all of these supplies really depend on one thing, and that's heavy Sierra snowpack. Uh, the Sierra form the eastern edge of California, and all the weather that comes in from the west accumulates the snow in the mountains, and if you don't have a good snowpack, you don't have a good water year for the next year. So um, that, keep that in mind, we'll come back to that. Now, the unique thing about California, I mentioned appropriate rights and riparian rights. Well, in California, you have both. That's unique. You don't really have that in any other state, meaning you can still take your bucket of water out of the, out of the river, and someone else can also appropriate some out of the river, and the one person in line is the one with the bucket. That leads to a very complicated legal framework, and I'm not going to get into it here, but keep in mind, well, that's why you have so many lawyers in California. If, if you're a water lawyer, move to California, you'll do just fine. So, uh, and, 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 and I work on projects right now in my job, uh, one for a city called the City of Pismo Beach, where um, I'm in the middle of adjudicating a water dispute between two neighboring cities. They both see a groundwater basin that's there. It's going to end up in court. The developer who wants to build on this is not going to be able to build anything. That's what's going to happen. That's my prediction. Anyone from Pismo Beach watching that? Um, next, next slide. Um, just a few statistics. The water budget, this is stuff you can get off the state's water resource, Department of Water Resources website. Um, and notice there's three basic uses I have here. Environmental use, agricultural use, urban use. The last two seem obvious what they are. The first one is one that's probably not something you're too wondering what that is. But nearly half of all the state's water is intended to be used for nothing other than replenishing wetlands, groundwater supplies, habitats, going out to the ocean, fisheries, and so forth. And that's actually in the water budget of the state. But of the remaining half, Roughly 80% of it is used for agriculture. California is the leading agricultural state in the country. And you wouldn't think so necessarily, but um, in terms of the dollars that are produced from the crops that are produced, it's, it's on top. Um, the entire central part of the state is, is, is a huge agricultural basin. It didn't used to be. It used to be wetlands. It used to be swamps and marshes. But today it's growing lettuce, grapes, um, carrots. Um, any crop you can think of cotton. It's a huge cotton state, actually. And a lot of them are water intensive uses. So when you think of growth in California, it's not just about people moving there. It's about the agricultural industry. And it's an industry. And it's very important to the state's economy. Okay, now let's talk about how water is used and how this is going to translate into policy implications. This, by the way, is um, near a place called Paiute Pass in the Sierra Nevada. For those of you familiar with California, it, it would be west of Bishop, which is south of Mammoth Lake, south of Lake Tahoe. Um, and that's the, literally the, the, the pass over the top of the Sierra. And that's snowpack in August. So that's as, you know, there's snow even in August in the mountains in California. And that's getting water on our trip. Uh, I don't really want to dwell on this, but I want to illustrate a couple of things. This being the state, the blue stacks are environmental water use, that is, places where there's a lot of extra water, it's all in the north. In the south, there isn't a whole lot of water. Where you see big, tall red stacks, that means uh, it's used for urban uses, big cities like LA and San Diego, and up here, San Francisco. And uh, the, the green ones are basically agricultural areas, the whole Central Valley, where you see the green is the big agricultural area down there. Water's being used, it's being budgeted, people are tracking it, people understand it. That, that, there's a framework for understanding what the situation is. Okay, California has 35 million people and the population is growing. 35 million people, that means one out of eight people in the United States.
United States live in California. Um, and it's growing, um, and mostly through immigration, actually. So a lot of people from California, such as him and them, they, they moved out of California for a lot of reasons, including economic ones. Um, and so you have a changing demographic there. And it's changing the nature of how you have to do planning, how you have to do, um, a good example of that is, is immigration from Mexico. Um, the, the economy depends on Mexican immigration, frankly, and for its agricultural uses. But it changes how you do planning because a lot of families don't have the income to be able to support a large house. So you actually have the development of large houses that, that hold two or three families, and they market them that way. Six bedroom homes with two kitchens. So you have two families moving into them and buying them. So that's, that's an example of the changing demographic. The back on the water use, that is agriculture is big, and heavy overdraft of groundwater supply is a big deal in agricultural areas, such as in the San Joaquin Valley in the southern part of the state. Um, so you have crisis during, occurring during the years of low snowpack in the Sierra or the Rocky Mountains, which is another source of, of water for California. Bottom line, there isn't enough water to do all the things that are being done right now. So how has water policy in California been approached? Well, I'm a little flippant about it. It says water planning efforts aren't really based on reality. Um, and that's kind of true, but what, what that really means is people didn't have data when they started developing policy. And so what it meant was, historically, in California, planners had based things on an average rainfall year. Well, those of you who are on the climate side of things understand that in California, you don't have average rainfall years. You have low rainfall years every year and an occasional spike where it's five times as much rainfall as you'd ever expect. So the average year just doesn't really happen that often. And the implications of that are that you've got, um, you're always operating in a crisis mode. You assumed a certain amount would be coming, you're always at about 70 or 80% of that. And so there's, the, the, there's always, politically speaking, what are we gonna do about the water situation? It's always in, in the news. So the legal response is there's been developing since the 60s, I would say, all kinds of different mechanisms in California to deal with that, but mostly since the late 80s. And I alluded to one, the concept of lawsuits and adjudicated groundwater basins. Adjudication means the courts get involved. Two people fight over the same water and the courts decide who gets it. Um, there are, there's a requirement of local water master plans. Each city and county has to account for where the water is coming from, who's using it, when it's gonna be used, and won't allow development, even long range planning for something until the, you can demonstrate there's enough water to do it. Um, recent state law has backed that up. And there's been searches for new sources of water but beyond the traditional ones. Um, desalination plants to get it right from the ocean. That's never really been a viable option economically, but now with the cost of water going up, it is. With technology improving, it's getting to the point where they can do that. City of Santa Barbara, for example, Southern California, they developed a desalination plant in response to a major water shortage in 1990. Then the rains came, so they never used it. They never used it, and then the technology got old, and then they sold it off for parts. So, and it wasn't a cheap thing to do. This is a city building a desalination plant. Now it's a wealthy city, so they had some money to do that. But that was an unusual, but the typical kind of response we've seen. The other kind is reclaimed wastewater. Now the technology is now to do, able to do um, secondary and tertiarily treated water. That is, really clean the water that goes into the wastewater treatment plants to get it to drinking water standards. You can do it. Politically, it's hard to sell people on the idea of drinking wastewater. So, but it's, it's an option, and it's a way to recycle a lot of the water use. And we're getting to that point where there's becoming more acceptance of the concept. All right, so now here, what, what are we doing here when you throw climate change into the mix? Um, as most all of you know, Schwarzenegger's the governor out there. And you know what, I gotta say, um, I'm a Democrat, and I think he's a pretty good governor, actually. He, he actually is, he's a Republican. He's actually doing a pretty good job on a lot of fronts. Uh, he kind of runs in like a bull in the china shop, but he kind of gets a few things done, and he's actually been quite an activist on the climate issue and the water issue. Um, as I say, or as I said before, the, the, the consensus in the climate world is there's gonna be less rain, therefore less water in California. What are we gonna do? 